Well, there's light at um, all ends of the sky, making it hard for dung beetles to map the stars. Findings by Wirtz Professor Marcus Bain, uh, Byrne rather, have been published in the journal Current Biology. Byrne looked at how the beetles were impacted by what is known as sky glow or light pollution when trying to orientate themselves. He joins me now in studio for that conversation. I hope I pronounced your name correctly there. Byrne, is it? Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you so much Thanks for that. Decision. So this is fascinating. It seems to suggest that dung beetles are thrown off by all the light that we as human beings are putting out in the night sky in addition to you know, what's already out there. Just take me through your findings. Well, you've put your finger on it precisely. We've got an animal that we know how it operates and it uses celestial cues. So it uses the sun during the day if it's a diurnal species, a day active species. And nocturnal species also use cues in the sky as well. And it's the moon or the Milky Way when the moon's not available. And unfortunately, in our cities, we generate so much light that these animals now cannot find their way around. And so what that indicates is that there are many other animals that will also be confused by this night light. Why does this research matter um, in the bigger um, ecological and, and um, ecosystem that, that we know our universe to be? Yeah, I think that's a really important question because on the one hand it's a, it's a tiny finding about a single organism, but in many respects that organism is like a canary in the mine. You know, it's an animal that we know enough about that we can ask it very precise questions. And the answer it gave us was, I'm lost. Now, that's happening to many, many other species, um, probably birds, lots of other insects. And if we just take the insects, the insects actually drive our ecosystems, believe it or not. They're at the bottom of all the food chains. They are principally the, um, the recyclers in every system. And they're the pollinators in every system. And if we are confusing these animals uh, so that they can no longer operate properly, we are undermining our world ecosystems. Yeah, because everything depends on everything else, right? Exactly. Just locate the dung beetle then within that ecosystem that we are talking about. What, what role um, does the dung, uh, you know, the uh, humble dung beetle play? Hard working, but you know, in, in the bigger scheme of things, what, what role does it play? Yeah, well, we're very fortunate in this country. We've got 800 species of dung beetles. So it's not 800. Just, yeah, my goodness. 2,000 in Africa, 6,000 worldwide. So they literally are the recyclers of, of the world. And nutrients that get dropped onto the pasture or the felt as dung need to be recycled back into the soil so they're available for plants to grow. And these guys are the ones that are doing it. And, and they're really just a representative of all the soil insects that are doing that recycling. So in terms of the light being too much to the extent of confusing uh, the dung beetle in their navigation, <laughs> for starters, let me just backtrack for a moment. I wasn't aware that <laughs> you know, this insect is that uh, sophisticated to be able to navigate using celestial bodies such as the stars, uh, the moon and the, and, and, and the sun. Yeah, uh, um, it's pretty amazing. This animal has a tiny brain. It literally is probably a couple of hundred thousand neurons, but it is able to do a navigational and orientation behavior that I certainly have difficulty doing, you know, finding my way around. And again, it's why these organisms are so useful as model organisms that allow us to learn how to do very complex ta tasks with very simple computing power. So uh, we've used them for lots of other experiments because we know so much about them yeah. and we can ask them questions. And, and, and that navigation ability, has it informed any of our technological developments? Have we taken anything like, you know, how we, we take from uh, birds um, the principles of flight? Have we done the same with the dung beetle and the ability to navigate using celestial bodies? 
Absolutely. Uh, a lot of our research is now appearing in the computational um, field and the robotics field because what we have here is a, a tiny brain, a tiny computer if you like, that can orientate itself on the planet without the use of a GPS, without the use of a compass, without the use of a radar, without the use of any sensors and it can find its way across the planet. And if we can teach autonomous vehicles to operate in the same way, we've made a a huge advance by using an insect as a, a guide in how to do this. I don't want to lie, um, my mind is blown away by what you are saying about, you know, this tiny little insect's ability to do what you are describing. I, I'd never thought more of it other than, you know, um, a dung beetle just moving a ball of dung. Um, and, and, and it ends there for me. <laughs> I, I'm truly fascinated by what you have said. How do we mitigate against what is happening then in terms of that confusion, which possibly will have consequences for the various species of dung beetle? Yeah, and that's the massive question. And the, the short answer is switch the lights off, um, which in many respects is easy, but in many respects is hard. You know, the human population has increased by two and a half times in my lifetime. Um, our light pollution in, so we've gone up at about 1% one, 1 to 2% uh, a year. Light pollution is going up at 2% a year. And that's because so many of us now have access to uh, cheap LEDs, which consume very little electricity and give off an enormous amount of light. So we have this beautiful uh, technology that we need. But we need to think about how we use it, and we need to direct it downwards, and we need to switch it off when we're not using it. Direct it downwards and switch it off when we're not using it. Because um, just as a parting shot, in addition to the consequences for you know, species such as the various species of dung beetle, you also have a situation where many people who live in cities say, actually, the sky doesn't look as pretty as it does if you are in the rural areas, right? And I think that's a really important part of the story because our heritage is in the sky, believe it or not. Every culture on the planet has uh, a mythology that is associated with the sky. So it's part of our heritage as human beings. We're losing that. A, th a third of the population now can't see the Milky Way. And we're, so we're losing that part of our history. And I think that's, that's very, very sad. And I think we should try and uh, redress that. Wow, Marcus Byrne, thank you. Educational, I think, is the word uh, that comes to mind uh, for our okay. conversation in the last few minutes. Thank you for coming through there uh, and sharing your insights with me. You're watching.